My name is Ian and welcome to Planted, my gardening channel. Now in last week's episode, I showed you how I built this wonderful greenhouse. It's made out of solar wrap and a galvanized steel frame. There'll be a link in the description. Please go back and have a look at how you too could have your own lean-to greenhouse. But in this video, I want to talk about heating, ventilation and workspace. And I have to make the point that having a greenhouse doesn't mean that you're suddenly going to have more plants than you can possibly imagine. What inevitably happens is that the greenhouse becomes a dumping ground. Wheelbarrows, broken tools, pots, bags of potting medium. And I'm not going to have that happen here. So what you see in front of me is this nursery grade uh, tabletop. Uh, it doesn't twist, can take great weights, and if it gets wet, it doesn't matter. And this is going to have its own separate greenhouse. I'm going to put another layer of plastic up the sides, across the top, and then down the back. And this will become my plant growing area where I can grow seeds, I can take cuttings, and I can grow plants that have rooted. So this is plants only, nothing else. And I can come in around the back, I've got a nice easy access, and the amount of production that this area can put out is quite remarkable. It's about 50 square feet of table area, and that is ample for what I need. So I'm going to show you how I set this up, and it's very, very easy and absolutely worth doing. Now let's talk about uh, heating. Behind me, I've got these beautiful black plastic barrels, and they're going to get filled with water. And what they do is they act as a battery. All you have to do is spray them up black, uh, site them in your greenhouse, and they do a number of things. They take in any direct energy from the sun that can come through the greenhouse, and that heat will go into the water that's stored inside. But in my environment, what I want to do is they will act as a, a, a battery and store energy to be released at night. So let's say they get to 50 degrees Fahrenheit during any given day. The temperature outside drops. I've now got three huge barrels staying at 50 degrees. They're not going to suddenly go down to freezing because there's so much energy stored in them. So that will form the backbone of the heating in my greenhouse, my secondary greenhouse. And all I then have to do is add supplemental heating on those nights when it is really, really cold. But because the area is so much smaller, it's really easy to heat. When you get a greenhouse, don't try and fill all of it with plants. It won't work. You want an area where you're growing plants, which is what this is. I'll have a potting bench that will be in future videos. And this is plants only. It's very, very easy to fill your greenhouse with junk. Don't do that. So we have a ventilation up here that lets the hot air out, and that is set very high in the greenhouse. And then down here we have a ventilation that lets in fresh cold air. That's low down. So now we get this cross breeze. Cold air coming in the bottom, hot air leaving out of the top. Now with solar app, when you are going to fit a, a roof vent, this means that you're going to have to cut a hole in your very precious bubble plastic. So I've got the base of my vent that I'm going to use, and I made a template. And here you can see me setting it up so I know exactly where I'm going to start cutting. And obviously you can only cut once, so take your time, get it level, get it in the right place, and make sure it's square. Be absolutely sure that you're cutting in the right place before you pull out your knife, because this is plastic, and once you cut it, you are committed. Now I've learned the trick of cutting on the inside face. This means that I've got about a half inch or three quarters extra for a nice tight snug fit. A sharp knife is imperative and I cobble together this long handled arrangement and it makes, well, it's not difficult, but it just helps keep it nice and accurate. There's something very satisfying about cutting the plastic because it means that you really are getting closer to having the ventilation that you need. On the corners, cut a little diagonal, and then that will allow the flap to ride up the outside edge of your wooden frame. So what you see here is going to be attached and stationary. The upper part of the 
vent is fitted with a stainless steel hinge and you can see here we're testing for fit. There's a nice overlap and there's even a draft excluder fitted on the upper lip to ensure that there's no leaks of valuable hot air. I was encouraged to use this high gloss spray paint as it's a bit more durable when applying it to a plastic surface. Make sure that your barrels are clean on the inside and they're also clean on the outside for a nice smooth finish. I got the barrels online, they were $10 each, and I put on a thin layer of paint and then went around and did a second coat. And it's a second coat where you start to get that nice, dense, even spray black finish, which is what I was looking for. Now, when you are ready to set your barrels, I would encourage you to set them in the approximate place, but do not fill them full of water. The chances of you getting them in the right place to start with are pretty slim, and if they're filled with water, it's a real pain to empty it and then relocate them. So these won't get filled with water for at least a week. I want to make sure that they are just right. The amount of heat these barrels will store is astounding. It's just this constant background heat that is free. And in an enclosed, smaller, inner greenhouse, very, very productive. Now this table was given to me. It was a little bit beaten up, so I cut it down to size. And it actually fits these barrel tops perfectly. I can have the barrels slightly staggered so that I'm spreading the weight out over a larger area. And uh, these barrels, when they're filled with water, will be so robust, so strong, that tabletop's not going to go anywhere. Now, I would encourage you to spend time and make all of your uh, propagation area the same level. I made a header here. There's a lip on the inside so that the whole of this end of the table arrangement is at the same grade. You'll be pulling trays and pulling pots, and if the tables are at the wrong height, they bang and trip and you can turn a pot upside down. So taking a little bit of effort to set it level might seem a bit of overkill, but it is well worth it. You'll see me lift the big table onto that lip in just a moment. And once it's on there, we've got this nice even playing field and I can move trays from one side to the other without them tipping over. It's a small detail, but it makes a big difference. Now I'm on concrete and I've got some different heights on these legs. So we made these feet that slide inside the hollow legs. There's eight legs, so I cut eight feet. They're only about four or five inches long. And then I can set them individually, put a couple of screws through them, and I end up with the most amazingly level table. It's a small detail, but it does make a difference. It means that you're very, very uh, productive, and this is gardening with intent rather than by chance. Look at that for level. Anybody would think that I've done this before. Now the ventilation system uses the same bracket for the hot air leaving the greenhouse as for the cold air coming in. This is the little adjustment piece, this little U-bend that you need to attach to the, uh, the cold air in, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But this system is remarkable. It's got, uh, I think it's a wax-filled cylinder that expands when it gets hot and contracts when it gets cold. And this system needs no power. There's no electricity, there's no motor, it's all automatic. And I've had one in my small greenhouse for four or five years and it's done great. I will say this, that they are strong in one direction, that's how they're engineered. You must make sure that you get the two arms lined up. If you put them twisted or out of line, then the forces don't work. So make sure that they are properly aligned and you'll get all of the force in the right direction, in the right plane. Now, coupled with that, we have this new, as we would say in England, aluminium vent. In the States, it's aluminum. Uh, the size of your vents is something that you're going to have to work with. I fully expect I might add another vent in time. But as we're coming into the winter, I'm not quick to vent what I want to stay warm. And I made this wooden frame. It's very, very tight tolerance that goes around my aluminium vent. 
and I'm setting mine in the middle of one of my uh, sheets of uh, solar wrap. If I'm too close to one of the posts, I don't quite get the ability for the solar wrap to uh, fit the way I want it. And it's the same with the ceiling I'm cutting on the inside with a sharp knife, making sure that I'm parallel, because you only want to cut once. Here we go, fitting the vent into its uh, framework. It is a tight fit. You need to make sure that you don't bend the aluminium. You can do if you're a little bit too strong or forceful. So half inch one end, half inch the other, half inch the other, and you'll be just fine. And then outside, you can capture the plastic onto the internal frame with some more uh, strips of pressure-treated lumber. Make sure that any of the stripping is not preventing the vent from operating. You see me every now and then just touching the vents to make sure that they are open. There it is, job done. Now the mechanism assembly is not difficult, but I would say it's tricky. You need to screw the cylinder into the housing, and then you need to put a pin through the end of the cylinder for the framework, and that is a bit that's tricky. A pair of pliers is ideal, because I've got fat fingers, but I would encourage you to put the, uh, the wax-filled cylinder in a freezer box for 10 minutes. It'll cool it down, you can compress it, and it'll be a much easier job. The wax-filled cylinder rotates in the housing, and that is how you set the temperature control. And here we are fitting that same unit to the, the cool air intake, and it's almost identical to the hot air exhaust up in the ceiling. Some of the brackets actually rotate, so you can fit them at different angles. Uh, I made sure that I pre-drilled the aluminum holes before drilling into the uh, wooden surround. And I would encourage you to fit this loosely. You don't need to clamp everything down super tight first time around. Uh, I put screws in the upper fitting so that I was not putting any stress or strain while I was fitting the lower fitting. You see it's hanging here. It's just fine. I, I didn't want to clamp it down too tight too soon. Now the U-bolt assembly clips into the uh, bent frame it's very easy, it's not difficult at all. And then you connect that to the other end of the hinge. There is some hardware in the kit that I don't use. I didn't use on either of my two installations because they're made for a greenhouse with brackets that uh, a bracket can slide onto the greenhouse frame. I don't have that, so I didn't use them. So don't be surprised if you've got a few spare fittings at the end of this uh, process. Once I've got everything installed, I can then go back and tighten everything up and make it a finished item. So let's just go back to venting. Calculating the amount of ventilation you need is very, very difficult. It depends on your aspect, it depends on your insulation value, it depends on your solar gain, so many things. Fresh air coming into a greenhouse is an absolute must. If it's a big greenhouse, you might need to force it with a fan. I don't think I'm going to need to do that because mine's quite small. But I also have uh, 13 feet of height. My vent to exit hot air is at 12 feet. And I've got cold feet, come, cold air coming in at about a foot and a half above the ground. So this is called the Venturi effect, where you pinch down an area, increase the speed of air moving inside it, and then it will vent going out. You can rotate the uh, hydraulic cylinder, that will change the sensitivity of when the vents open. You can have it open at 65, you can have it open at 75, and anywhere in between. But every situation is different. Whatever it is that you've got in your greenhouse, you might need to do a little bit of uh, adjustment and playing around with the system to get it to work properly.
So let's just sum up this video. We've got our work surface where we can do our plant growing and our plant propagation. This will be in a separate enclosed area. We have a vent at the top of the greenhouse that lets the hot air out. We have a vent low down that lets the cold air in. Then we have our black plastic tanks that will absorb heat energy and radiant energy during the day, and then that can be released at night. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.